All right, we are back. My internet decided to crap out right when I let the first person into the room, but let's try this again. Try this again. Jack. Hey. Dude, I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. It's like right when I let you into the room, my internet just died, and then I had to yeah, restart yeah, everything all yeah. over again. <laughs> I'm so sorry all, about that. I, all, all I heard you say was like, Jack, and then you just froze. And I was like, oh, <laughs> it was like the Titanic, but like the other way around, you know, like, <laughs> how's it going, man? I'm good. I'm good. So uh, just letting you know, so we're live streaming onto YouTube right now, and cool. we can talk about whatever you want. We're also live on TikTok right now. But yeah, I'm all yours. I'm all ears. What's up? How can I help you? All right, sweet. So, um... So my first question is um, how to deal with kind of like the pressures of like the competitiveness of getting into medical school. Like, mm -hmm. did you feel yourself like being super anxious or were you always pretty confident or yeah? Yeah. I mean, like, you know, in the beginning of my journey, it was really like I was anxious, but the anxiety was kind of rooted in regards to like my thoughts about myself and how I compared myself to others, if that makes sense. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't really like, I never faced an external pressure to get into medical school. I never really like felt pressure or like co toxic competition from other people. I was really lucky. I went to uh, UC Irvine for my undergraduate and yeah, it, it yeah, wasn't yeah, a toxic yeah. environment at all. So um, yeah, I had a struggle in my first year where I, I really like wasn't really believing in myself and my capabilities of like getting into medical school. But um, you know, I kind of was able to overcome that by like basically um, proving to myself that I was like academically capable, if that makes sense, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, does that kind of address your question? Yeah, yeah, so so did you kind of come out of the gates like pretty hot in terms of like your grades, freshman year? Or, like... No, I ended my freshman year with a GPA less than a 3.0. So okay. I came into the gates hot in terms of like wanting to get like a fun college experience, but yeah, not really sure. hot in terms of like striving to do well academically, if that makes sense. Uh, what's yeah. like your like personal scenario or situation? So um, I just finished up my first year at Michigan State uh -huh. and um, I, um, I four pointed everything this year. Nice, so, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, and because of that, originally I wasn't in the honors college, but because of that, they invited me to be in it. So um, that's kind of my scenario right now. Okay. Um, and next year, so I took gen chem this year. I didn't take any bio. I did gen chem and like a lot of like university prereqs. Mm -hmm. And next year, um, I'm taking um, honors bio and uh, organic chemistry okay. and as well. So, okay, yeah. cool. So you're in a really good spot right now. Mm -hmm. So like, um, are you worried about anything? Um, I guess like the biggest thing is like kind of the extracurricular so um for me this past year on tuesdays i would volunteer from like 8 a.m to noon mm -hmm. in um in like a post-surgery anesthesia care unit okay um like cleaning beds and stuff that was fall semester and then spring semester i'd volunteer from nine to four in the emergency room and then like an orthopedic hospital okay and stuff like that so i racked up quite a few like volunteer nice. hours and stuff and i just got a like a leadership position with the university activities boards so like we plan events for like students of the university and stuff mm -hmm. but um and those are two things that like i'm really like passionate about like i love like the planning events and stuff like that mm -hmm. uh, but i was wondering is there like a best time to like go out and do research because i don't know how long i'm going to do that leadership like through the university um yeah stuff like that so i don't know when to necessarily like necessarily dip my foot and really start doing like true like clinical stuff you know what i mean yeah well you know you're already doing like clinical stuff right now i think you meant to say research stuff just now yeah. dude yeah. i mean like so my thought process with like extracurriculars and stuff is like when you do it i want people to like dip their toes slowly 
and then find things that they can do like longitudinally, right? So it sounds like you're like firing on all four cylinders kind of right now in regards to the volunteering. It sounds like it's, it's like taking up a, 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 like a good amount of your time. I think there's right. never a wrong time to start with like research or like any other extracurricular. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like maybe you start dipping your toe in and do a little bit. And if you get super fired up about it, then you make it a more significant part of your schedule, right? But uh, yeah. my perspective is like, you wanna have your hand in as many cookie jars as possible for as long as possible. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Obviously, you're going to value certain things and certain things are going to take up more time than others. But like, I'd rather see you get started in research sooner rather than later, even if it's just in a minimal capacity. You know what I mean? Yeah, while exactly. still maintaining your volunteer involvements, while still maintaining your leadership and the other stuff that you're doing, right? Yeah. Of course, like the equalizer is going to change depending on what things you actually end up like caring and getting more excited about. But I'd rather have you start as soon as possible. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, because like this, like with the leadership, it's going to be like 20 hours a week. Mm-hmm. Is cause, so like I'm like a paid university employee for that. Um, yeah, what's the then, job again? Like, what? What's the university job? It's called, it's called the University Activities Board. So it's like a, it's kind of like a student org, but mm-hmm. not, not technically. It's technically a branch of the university. Okay. So... Uh, I'm an event director, so I work with um, a project team, is what they're called, of like, of just the basic members of the of the group, mm-hmm. and we plan these like different events, like fun stuff in the university. Okay. So like last year they did like ice skating at um at our hockey arena and just a bunch of other and there's like cultural stuff that we do like cultural events and different stuff like that. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, I mean, like, you know, depending on how you feel about that extracurricular, like, let's say you you get involved in research and you're like, oh, wow, like, I really like this research, like, I'm really stoked on this. You can maybe find a way to maybe do less hours with that job or do less hours of volunteering or whatever. Like, I I think the important thing is to remain flexible, if that makes sense. And as long as you, like, remember that, you know, like, you're the one in control at the end of the day, like, you'll be able to decide what you want to care about. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um... Yeah, in terms of like being flexible and like maintaining like a good like time management skills obviously are huge. Mm-hmm. Um, did you kind of like go through undergrad like slowly and like really like build up the grades and do like twelve credits, thirteen credits, or did you take the bigger like eighteen credit semesters and really try and like crank it all out? Yeah, for me, it was actually like the the first two years of my undergrad were pretty much set in stone because like. I was a part of the honors program and then, um, you know, they had a pretty strict schedule for the honors programs uh, students for the first two years if they were bio majors. So nothing was really up to me, but I started off hot out of the gates with like 20 units in my first uh, term. And then I think my second term was like 18 or 19 units or something. But like, uh, yeah. And I mean, like, you know, if you're the one in control and you get to decide how much you do, I think yeah start off slow and that's totally fine i mean you're just wrapping up your first year right right and you did well Mm -hmm. Uh, like a little more than well you know so like you found out what already sort of works i would just continue that train you know like i don't know how many units uh, did you take um i took 12 my first semester which Mm -hmm. is the minimum to be a full-time student Mm -hmm. and then i took 14 in the second and right now i'm taking like a bioethics like two credit online class Mm -hmm. um and so after after I complete that this summer, I'll be at 34 credits. Okay. Yeah, no, I mean, dude, if there's one piece of it, uh, of advice I can give you is like it like if you take advantage of summer school, mm-hmm. you, you know, like you like I don't know how it works at your school, but at my school the summer was split up into two summer sessions. So yeah, you could take yeah, like, like one class in the first session and one class in the second session and and like in each session since you're only taking one class at a time, that's like all you have to worry about. It's pretty much like you're probably gonna get an A if you put in the work, especially because you have nothing else like going on like academically. Yeah. So you take advantage of those summers, that frees up your schedule during the school year so that you can take a, lo- a lighter course load, have more free time and more flexibility to do more extracurriculars. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely, it definitely does. So um, this is another question about kind of like your journey because UCLA is like my dream. Um, Are you from but- the West Coast? No, um, I, um, I'm from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Okay. Actually. Yeah. So, but I love like California, UCLA, like I love like their mission and all that. So, mm-hmm. um, did you know, like, as you were going through undergrad, were you like, 
I know I'm competitive and I know I can get into a school like UCLA or did, were you kind of like on the fence and then because you ended up getting the full scholarship too which is freaking awesome too yeah um you know that's a good question I would tell you out of the gates I didn't think I was going to be competitive enough to even get into medical school in the first place right and then by the time I went through junior and senior year, I get more involved, more extracurriculars, and you kind of show yourself like, oh man, like, you know, I can handle doing a bunch of things, you know? I, yeah. Like, as I mentioned earlier, I, I ended my freshman year with a GPA less than a 3.0, but then by the time I, I had finished my junior and senior year, I got like nearly straight A's through my last mm -hmm. two years of school. So I kind of proved to myself that like, I kind of was academically capable, and my GPA when I ended up graduating was 3.64, which is basically average. Actually, in terms of cumulative GPA, it's below average by today's standards. But, um, well, you know, I, I didn't know I was going to be competitive. And but by that point, I, I knew my extracurriculars were good. I had a few publications and stuff. But I didn't know I was going to be, like, competitive, competitive until I took the MCAT and I got my MCAT score after I graduated. That's when I was like, okay, like, okay, maybe... So you took the MCAT after you graduated? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, can I ask what you got on your MCAT? Yeah, I got a 523 on the MCAT. And when I got, I saw that and then I saw my extracurriculars, even though my GPA was average, I was like, all right, I, I feel like I have a good application. Like it, it kind of eased a lot of my worries. Yeah. Um, you know, and I didn't know for sure I was going to end up at a school like UCLA. Mm -hmm. Of course, not even with like a full scholarship or anything close to that. But yeah. like, you know, I had a good feeling I was going to be able to, you know, go to a relatively like I, I had a good feeling I was going to get in somewhere you know what I mean right. at that point yeah. um it was just a matter of where I was hoping to stay in California because I'm from LA originally so it was a blessing yeah, cool. to be able to get in and yeah. like you know be able to stay in LA get to go home whenever I want and that's why like one of the things I do like one of the reasons why I do stuff like this is because I want to give people like you the opportunity to, yeah. and the knowledge to like know how to build a competitive application so you can end up picking the school that's right for you financially, geographically, et cetera. Like, are you not interested in like going to uh, Michigan for med school? I am just personally not a huge fan of Michigan, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but like, I mean, it's definitely on the table. I, yeah. I just like, I love the West coast. So mm -hmm. like geographically, like that's the dream. Okay. Honestly, no matter where I get in, I mean, I'll take it. Okay. Cause you know, I mean, a doctor's a doctor at the end of the day. Of course. And, so um whether it's md do whatever mm -hmm. um, like whatever happens happens but the dream is ucla okay um but um another one of my questions was um how did you find that kind of like internal motivation like just to stay motivated because like being a pre-med is hard in terms of like the classes and all these things that are kind of like expected of you to be competitive mm -hmm. So where did that kind of motivation like come from? Did it like, was it always there? Like, did you always know you wanted to be a doctor? Yeah, no, that's a good question. I would say like, I, I always had an inkling and, but you know, that inkling didn't really translate into motivation in my first year, for example, right? You know, like part of the reason why I performed poorly, I mean, I'll take full ownership of this is that I didn't really try super hard. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like um, consistently like turning in assignments late, turning in lab reports late, you know, just like I was that guy. Um, and, you know, in, in terms of the motivation, like once I proved, like I remember I took a freshman, at the end of my freshman year, because I, like this is like another story, but I, I was set on changing my major out of bio and I was basically like, I had given up on being a pre-med. So my last quarter of my, uh, last quarter of my, Freshman year, I didn't take any science classes. I didn't take any pre-med classes. I was like, all right, let, like, let's explore other fields. And, you know, I ended up deciding to give pre-med like one more chance, like a, a few yeah. weeks in, like into the summer. And I had to sign up for a chemistry course last minute online. Not online, but like I had to go online and sign up for a chemistry course last minute. Because yeah. at UCI at the time, if you're a bio major and you fall behind in your classes, they kick you out of the major. So like, you know, at this point, you know, if school started up again in the fall, they were going to kick me out of the bio major and I was going to be done. So I was like, oh, you know, if I want to give like pre-med one more shot, I, I might as well, you know, try and stay in my major. So yeah. I signed up for that chemistry course last minute. You know, I had already missed like a, a whole week of class, but I had, I, I was, you know, what, screw it. Like, like, let's like go for it. I went for it. And, um, you know, I was basically able to get an A and that first A in that chemistry course, that kind of was like the 
thing that kind of snowballed into me getting the motivation, right? Because if you see the fruits of your labor a little bit, like that first A, it kind of snowballs into you trying harder because now you know, oh, if I try, things are going to go well, you know? So that snowball right. effect kind of allowed me to like basically build the motivation, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like yeah. build the motivation yeah. for myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Kind of like an internal like. I can do this. Just yeah. look at what I've done in the past. Like, it's good. Okay. Dude, I'm, I'm all about like those small wins. And you know, sometimes it's an academic small win. Sometimes it's like landing that first major extracurricular, you know, but that shit snowballs and it turns into something awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, like inside of you. And that's why I also get fired up about getting people to start shadowing as soon as possible or at least working in a clinical environment as soon as possible. Because you, like, you get exposed to that clinical environment and to shadowing and you see like what you're going to be doing a few years down the line. And that usually motivates a lot of people. I mean, that was one of the things that added extra motivation for me personally, you know? Yeah. So like yeah. I'm all about like proving to yourself that you're capable and also just like getting motivated in that way. Yeah, definitely. Um, so the next question I had was about like, like a specialty. So mm -hmm. I, I really, really like, uh, orthopedic surgery. Okay. Um, I've, I've torn my ACL twice in the labrum in my shoulder once. So I've had like three, like three surgeries and my surgeon, um, Dr. Hamilton out of Grand Rapids, I've shadowed him. Okay. And like, like, like a full day, like an eight hours, just surgery. I saw like five different surgeries mm -hmm. and, um, I really, really loved it. And I, and I had another day lined up, um, or another two days lined up in early May, but obviously due to COVID, I wasn't yeah. able to be in there. Um, since I have a specialty kind of like that, I really like, would you recommend, um, shadowing other ones as well? Yeah, I would, you know, I would definitely because like, you know, it just allows you to get a, a more broader exposure of medicine as a whole. And of course, you know, it's totally okay to have like a desire to do one specialty now in this very moment, like as like a pre-med, that's like totally fine. But I don't think that should stop you from exploring other fields through shadowing. And I think, you know, one of the purposes of shadowing is to get a broad exposure to medicine, right? Like if you've only been in the OR and you've only seen ortho stuff, like, you know, yeah. I think it's better to paint a picture of like, hey, like I've seen, I, I've had a broad exposure to medicine, you know? So it, like if you can, I would like recommend you shadow in some sort of like primary care setting, like a family doctor or some sort of like internist or something. And maybe also try and get some sort of shadowing experience in the emergency department. That would be cool. You know, yeah. I, I think broad and deep are both good. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So yeah. So when did you so do you have a specialty in mind yet or um yeah no i mean like you know going into med school i was almost dead set on becoming a surgeon and i'm still de definitely interested in surgery but now i'm way way more interested in primary care uh okay. you know cool. doing this mentorship stuff has kind of made me like remember like the whole reason why i went to med school in the first place is to have like relationships with people and stuff and that's why i think primary care would be really good for me i'm also interested in emergency medicine too because i think you know even though it's a short like interaction with a patient, you have an opportunity to have a really good connection with them, you know, even if it's like a, a, a small interaction. And so, yeah, yeah no, that's sure. what I'm thinking. But, you know, there's, yeah. you'll get into med school and you realize like there's so many different specialties. It's like crazy. Yeah. Like the variety of specialties is like insane. Yeah. So one kind of, a, so one of my last questions was, mm -hmm. um, so you went to UC Irvine for your undergrad. Yep. And I'm sure you have made like really, really good friends there. So now being like three years into med school, you're probably doing like clinicals and stuff like that. Um, so what's it like, is it hard seeing your friends all like out of college, kind of like getting a job and mm. you're here on the grind, busting your butt, studying for step one, two and all that. Um, so what, like, what's that kind of like? like that's a that's a really good question and you know it, it brings up something i'm super passionate about communicating with other people and it's that you know like we can't compare ourselves to others like if you want to be a doctor like who cares if your friend is you know working already is like an engineer or like a, a business yeah. person or whatever like who cares you know mm -hmm. so people have this notion in their head of like oh but like i want to start my life i don't want to wait and i'm like you're you're alive right now like what do you want to do you can do whatever you want right now. You know, being a student is like having a job. Like, you know, like 
I don't know, I, this is, I just get so frustrated when I hear people say like, oh, like, you know, I can't wait to just finish med school and, and finish residency and start my life. And I'm like, you're alive right now. You could do whatever you yeah. want right now. There's people starting families in med school and residency. There's people getting married. There's people buying houses and stuff, you know, like if like people get so caught up in like this, like plan that society, well, that they think society expects of, you know, everyone or that, like there may be family pressures, which I can totally empathize with, but that doesn't mean that those pressures are positive. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. I'm all about having people not compare themselves to other people because it just leads to negativity. You know what I mean? So I never actually personally even dealt with those thoughts because as much like, I, f I feel like I'm alive right now. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, mm -hmm. I'm sure like, you know, the fact that I'm going not going to have any medical school debt probably helps, right? But even yeah, so, yeah, like, you know, we, like, much, going yeah. into the med school application process, I knew that I, I was going to be in debt. Like, I knew that I was, like, probably going to be in debt, you know? And, like, you know what you're signing up for, but if you want to be a doctor, it's not going to matter, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know, like, it never really bothered me, honestly, because I know people who, are, who got jobs right after college, and they hate their life, and they hate their job. And, yeah. you know, I'm just grateful that I get to be doing what I want to do and that, that I'm happy and that I get to see my family and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm just grateful to be on this side of the ground. You yeah, know what I totally. mean? <laughs> I don't know, man. It's like people are like, oh, I want to start my life. And I'm like, dude, you're a lot. Like, what do you want to do? Like, you could do it. Yeah. What's the, like, yeah. oh, you want to travel? Yeah. There's winter break. Yeah. There's summer. Like, you know, like, I don't know, man. Don't yeah, know. that's like, that's almost honestly one of the biggest things that like, I've taken away from you because like, I've just found you like my TikTok for you page like, <laughs> half ago. And I was like, damn, like, I love what this dude has to say. So, like, hearing you like talk about like, especially the things where it's like, seize the moment now, like, reach out to professors now, reach out about research now because like, there's no time like the present. So, hearing stuff like that's like, it's really, really good because there's not a lot about that. And like, there are like other like TikTok, like pre-med people, but you just kind of like stand out to me. So I just wanted to thank you for that because it's really, really awesome. Hey, like, thank you for the kind words, man. That that really yeah. means a lot. And you know, um, yeah, it's just been a lot. Like I treat TikTok as kind of like a visual Twitter almost, you know, just like spit my yeah. thoughts out and stuff, you know? And like, we can Google all day, like how to get into med school and we can figure out the tactics and stuff, you know? But like what I felt like helped me a lot was kind of like my mindset I had, like going into certain things, like how I went about finding research, how I went about finding shadowing and stuff. And I, I realized after doing a lot of mentorship in the past year that like, a lot of what's limiting people is not like the strategy or the tactic, but like the mindset behind it. You know, so that's mm -hmm. what I'm passionate about communicating and it makes me really happy that you could take that away from the content. So thank you. Yeah, definitely. So in terms of like next steps to kind of yeah. like wrap up. Yeah. Uh, so my fall and spring are pretty wrapped up with that job and my volunteering and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, but would you still recommend reaching out for like shadowing right now, despite all of this, um, basically like cold emailing like doctors, other physicians, different specialties for me just personally? Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, like, you know, I, I don't know what the situation is looking like where you're at or at, like Michigan State or like the surrounding area. You could. We actually, you, we, we actually just got told that we're coming back in the fall. Today, okay, so. there you go. So, I mean, like, you know, I don't think it's inappropriate to reach out at all. Just make it clear that you're reaching out for like when it's safe. So, like, maybe like include that statement, like, you know, like when things are safe, I would love to shadow you. And you don't have to ask right now. Like when you're reaching out, just ask people to, to hop on Zoom. Ask for yeah. a, a 15 minute Zoom call or phone call. And then you hit them with the ask if you feel like the call goes well and that they're stoked on you. You know what I mean? So now is the time to kind of network a little bit and maybe wait to ask. But you can ask now. I don't think that hurts at all. But I think, you know, if you want to wait to ask and just network and send feelers out and see who's, who's like into mentorship, who's into having students, that's really appropriate as well. So that's how I would go about it. So, so it is appropriate to just like cold email physicians. Yes. Okay. Bro, how yeah. else are we supposed to get in contact with people? You know That's what I mean? True. Especially if you don't have a doctor in your family. You know, yeah. like, I'm the first one in my family to go to college, to go to med school. Like, you know, there's no doctor. Like, I don't That's know awesome. any doctors. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I, I went out there and, like, you know, there, there's, like, shadowing programs and clinical, like, you know, programs that you can apply for. But those things are competitive and it takes time to hear back. And, you know, we got to yeah. make our yeah. own route. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. Sure. I'm a huge proponent of that, especially if you're coming off as kind and genuine. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. And if people yeah. get annoyed that you're reaching out, they're probably not going to be the best person to shadow in the first place. So, 
Sure. You know, it's like a good riddance. Yeah, for sure. All right, well, man. Thank you, man. I really appreciate Dude, it. Dude, of course, it's no problem at all. I want you to, to keep me updated, okay? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I'll shoot you. A, I'll shoot you a DM. I probably want to like get your email too, just to. Yeah, the the, the email is in my Instagram account. If you hit the email oh, button, the email's right yeah. there. Yeah, but no, I All do right. want you to keep me updated. All right, for sure. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. All right, brother. Really... I'll see you around. See ya. Nice. That was really good. That was the first Zoom call for the live stream show. That was a lot of fun. All right. Let's get the next person in here. Oh, where'd she go? Daphne. Hey, I can't hear you. I think you're muted. Hey, Hi. what's up? How's it going? Sorry, Hello. I think you're, you're, uh, you're a little muted. Can you hear me? Yes. There we go. What's up? How are you? Uh, I'm good. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. Um, really excited to have you on here. Uh, what can I help you with? Oh, uh, well, I've compiled a little list of questions. Beautiful. So I hope you don't mind that I'm like, reading <laughs> off what I remember. No, let's um, do it. Uh, I've actually, um, I'm really interested in working in a lab. Mm -hmm. And I've done my research, and I know that you have a couple of publications you're on, and I know that you've already talked about it once or twice in different um, club interviews for my club, exa for example. Mm -hmm. You've talked about your research, and you talked about how it's all about being proactive, and maybe when it's time, you ask, um, is it you will what do you say? How do you say it? Like you make it known that you would like to be on a publication. I think you've mentioned that before. Mm -hmm. um, and then all of that, um, I feel like it comes with a lot of like um, initiative. And I understand that initiative should be like number one and, and you should be passionate about what you do. But what are like the other things that people don't really know that you need to do in order to succeed in a lab? Like instead of just being like proactive. You know, I think first and foremost, you have to like the science 100%. Like, you need to be genuinely curious about what you're doing, you know? Like, for me personally, I loved the research I did as an undergrad. It was a lot of fun. You know, I'm a very visual guy. It was studying proteins using X-ray crystallography. So as a result of our work, we literally get like a visual three-dimensional representation of the protein structure. And I thought that was super cool. It made me really fired up. And I think when you have enthusiasm like that, you know, wanting to go super in depth with the research and the science and understanding the experiments just comes almost naturally, you know? So, you know, it's one thing to be, like you can be as proactive as you want, but if you don't like the stuff that you're doing, then there's like no point, you know what I mean? So I think first and foremost, you have to like it. And then, you know, going back to what you said about a publication, like it's okay to ask, you know, like after you've been in the lab for like a few months or like maybe it's longer, but like, you know, you just say, hey, like, you know, I'm, I'm planning on applying to med school or PA school or whatever your goal is and say, you know, it would really help me if I got my name on a publication, you know, what are some things I could be doing in order to get closer to that goal? And of course, how you say it is super important too. I mean, like you, you seem like a very kind and genuine person. So I don't think you're going to have a hard time asking that question. But I think as long as we come off as genuine with our intention and if we genuinely like like the work then you know it's totally okay to ask uh, so yeah those are my thoughts in regards to that did that kind of answer your question mm -hmm. yeah that did but it kind of brings about another question like um, when you're asking to join a lab or if you're asking a researcher like um, if you want to join their research and stuff like that and then for for example that they reject you or they say no for example when is the right time like when do you know when to stop asking or is there a line you shouldn't cross? Like, like you ask them to join a lab once and they say no? Are you talking about joining a lab? Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking, yeah. Yeah, so I mean like, you know. Thinking of, or like thinking of joining a lab. Yeah, so I think it depends on like, you know, when do you like, like you ask them once and they say no, it really depends on how they said no. Like they may say, oh, we're not looking for students at this time. That's much different than a no. 
you know i think asking on mm -hmm. like a like once a semester or once a quarter like depending on what school you're, you're like going to i think asking once a term is appropriate you know and i think over time it just demonstrates interest you know i don't think it's annoying for you to email someone like once every two three to four months you know like i don't think that's like, I don't think that's annoying, you know, especially if you come off as genuine and like reinstate your interest. And again, this goes back to making sure you're doing things that you're genuinely interested in. Like if you're genuinely interested, communicate that in the email, you know, they may not be okay with having you on now, but you know, just as long as you're genuine, it's not going to be annoying. And, if, and like, you know, most of the time they'll get back to you and they'll say, Hey, like we're not looking for students now, but they'll tell you when to follow up. Or maybe in your email, you can include a line that says, oh, if now is not a good time, let me know when would be a good time so I can follow up, you know, later. You know what I mean? So just ask them, like, you know, oh, like, mm -hmm. when do you think would be a good time to follow up with you to see if I could land a position? Mm -hmm. Well, I haven't written anything. I'm just preparing for every scenario. Yeah, no, I feel yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I think that's great advice. Um, uh, I also was interested if you, I heard you're entering your third year, so you're done with your pre-clinical pre studies, and I wanted to know if you have like a specific specialty you have in mind, or like a specific area of study that you're interested in, and how do you get to that like conclusion? Uh, you know, I'm not dead set on any one specialty. There's a few things I'm interested in. Uh, primary care is, is like number one on my list right now. Uh, then surgery, some sort of surgical subspecialty, and then emergency medicine. Those are like the three big umbrellas I'm looking at right now. Uh, but yeah, not dead set on, on anything. I'm just starting my clinicals right now, so I'll, I'll have a better picture once my clinicals wrap up. How does um, a clinical situation work in, in like a COVID era? Yeah, so I'm on like, pediatrics right now. How do your clinicals work? You don't mind me asking. It's just great. Yeah, I'm on pediatrics right now, and you know um, we're in the second week of our rotation, but it's all online. So it's like some, it's like a mix of Zoom lectures and like using like a simulation software to simulate like a patient interaction. Definitely not the same as being in the hospital, but we're like we're supposed to be back in like four weeks or so. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, that's great. Um, I wanted to know if. Um, I'm almost dead, dead set on going with uh, David Geffen for medical school. Like, I wanted to know like how the student life is there, like more on diversity and my groups, because you mentioned that you have like some some um, association with like Armenian Armenian American groups or uh, Iranian American groups, and I feel like how do you feel about like the diversity and the if there's any discrimination, how do you feel about those things on like student life and campus life? Yeah, no, it's been really good in regards to those things. It's been good. Yeah, I really want to answer questions that are really going to help you out. You know, so is there anything with your particular scenario that like we can answer or, or help you out with? Because I want to make sure that we get to as many people as possible. And uh, yeah, I think it would be best yeah. if like maybe sure. we answered uh, like questions that are specific to helping you. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, particularly for, I have mostly questions about um, UCLA's med school as uh, I'm gonna be like paying for it by myself. I mm -hmm. wanted to know what more like the process for you like Applying for it and stuff. Like that. Yeah, so um, you know, for there's a AAMC fee waiver that will give you like um, a discounted like MCAT registration fee and like application fee for your primary applications. And in terms of paying for medical school, you're going to have to basically speak with each school's financial aid office. And usually, like when they accept you, you'll get to have a better idea of what your financial aid situation is going to look like after the fact. Uh, but it is like very, like you're not really aware of like how those things are going to work until you've reached at least the interview process. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, if you build a good application, you'll increase the likelihood of like getting some sort of extra aid in the form of like a scholarship of some sort. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. Uh, and also, so um, what I really want to know is like, do you have to disclose any financial situations before the application, like before the official like interview process or anything like that? Or did you have to do something like that? Uh, usually okay. stuff like that isn't until later. So like once you get accepted and stuff, that, 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 that's when they start collecting your like financial information and whatnot. All right. And uh, I also wanted to know, since it's the, I'm going to be taking the MCATs next year, mm -hmm. what did you feel like were the hardest um, subjects that you had to focus on for it? Or like, what you did know, you feel like I wouldn't fixate on like, with? I wouldn't fixate on labeling one subject as harder than another. Like, you know, I just feel like that just gets us caught up in our own head and it doesn't really serve us any purpose. You know, if you're planning on studying for the MCAT and taking it next year, um, I would just look at ways to maybe incorporate some, some MCAT studying now, right? Like you can go online onto Reddit and use some sort of pre-made MCAT flashcard deck to provide, to do alongside your school classes so that you're able to retain all the content that you learn in school. And there's more information on that on on the internet and like on Reddit and YouTube and stuff. So that's what I would recommend for studying for, for the MCAT now. And then like once you get into like your dedicated MCAT study period, that's when I would start thinking about like doing questions and like doing passages and stuff like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does definitely. Cool. So let's do one more question. Uh, and finally, in UCLA, let's say you have like, I wanted to know specifically for UCLA if there's any like assistance if like a academic need arises. So like if you feel like you're struggling academically, is there anything that you can do over there that helps you like any? Are you well, talking about the, the medical school or the undergraduate? Uh, medical school. Yeah, so I mean, like, you know, the thing is ab about med school is like, schools will do their best to help you succeed academically. There's a lot of support. And you know, um, you're asking a lot of like UCLA specific questions. And you know, I just wanna make sure that you're aware that like, by the time it comes to applying to medical school, you're gonna be applying to at least, ideally 20 or at least at minimum 20 or 30 schools, you know? So I wouldn't get so fixated on like one medical school and how one medical school does things because you know, like we're going to end up applying to a lot of different schools, you know, so I don't want people to like get super dead set on one school like UCLA or Harvard or, or like whatever school it is, because like, you know, you there's really so much variability in the process and there's no way to know how things are going to turn out. But the general theme of all medical schools is that they do their best to keep their students academically successful. All right. Okay. Cool. So yeah, let me know how things go and keep me updated, okay? All right, okay, thank you so much. Yeah, of course, I'll see you around. Nice, let's move on to the next one. Let's do it. Guys, don't get fixated on one school, please. Just leads to unhappiness. There's so much variability in this process. Hello. Hello. Do you wanna introduce yourself for the listeners? Sure. Yeah, my name is Rojan. I'm a. I just finished my first year at undergrad, so I'm an entering sophomore. I'm studying neuroscience, and I'm minoring in piano performance, musical studies. So I've been playing piano for like ten years now, and I really like performing it. So I thought that'd be a nice thing to add on. Cool, cool. So, w what's your question? What can we help you with today? Um, I wrote down some questions and sure. then I kind of like separate them into two topics. One okay. of them being like more um, like curriculum based mm -hmm. slash like classes. And then the second one's just like mindset and some of the things that you have been talking about. Cool. Um, so yeah, so the first thing I wanted to ask was just like community college courses and taking them outside of like your university classes. Mm -hmm. I've just been hearing like really mixed reviews and it's been kind of confusing for me just because like, I've been planning to take um, like a full year of physics outside of my university. Mm -hmm. And I just hear people saying like, oh no, you shouldn't. The medical schools will think that like 
um, you're taking it because you want to take an easier route. But like for me personally, I didn't want to take it at my university over the summer just because it's so expensive. And yeah. Yeah. So yeah, see, you bring up a real, you've already kind of reasoned your way through the, through this question, the way that I would reason through it as well. Right. Yeah. Like, First of all, I can't speak for every admissions committee in the United States, first and mm -hmm. foremost. But let's just like logically reason through it. And I feel like you already know the answer to this. But like, first of all, there's people who go to community college straight mm -hmm. after high school, right? Yeah. And if you're a bio major trying to transfer from like a community college to a university, you're going to take at least some chemistry and some bio and maybe even some physics in your first few years at your community college, right? So in a situation like that, you're already forced to take your classes at a community college, right? right? So if there was like some sort of stigma against taking CC classes, then like that would mean that going to community college puts you at a significant disadvantage, which I think is totally unreasonable, right? There's yeah. so many people who transferred from a community college to a university and ended up getting into medical school, right? And second, for the reason you stated, right, like classes at universities are expensive, right? And let's say that someone decided to become pre-med last minute, right? They started out as a philosophy major and they just realized that they want to become a pre-med like in their senior year of college, right? But they're already on track to graduate, right? What makes more sense? adding a fifth year at a university, paying that yeah. super high university tuition, or graduating as planned, taking as many classes as possible while you're at the university, and then mm -hmm. taking the rest at a CC, right? It's just like, logically, it, it, it doesn't make sense for there to be like a stigma against community colleges, which is yeah. why I always say like, it's totally fine. However, you know, again, I can't speak for every admissions committee yeah. in the US, but just like logically, it just wouldn't make sense to me why that would put you at a a disadvantage. Similarly, that's also a, a lot of people assume that CC classes are easier than than uni yeah. university classes, and they're not. Yeah, like, they're not. let's be real. Yeah. I know people who went from CC and then university and struggled way more, like significantly more, at community college compared to yeah. after they transfer. You know, yeah. so like you know, again, I, I think all these things don't add up, and of course people who aren't in like well informed whatsoever love to spread their opinions regardless you know so uh, yeah. yeah i feel like you already knew what i was going to say but i'm i'm no, glad no, that you asked that, that. Like, i go on all these like websites and they're like no you don't do it like i'm like why like, <laughs> like you do it <laughs> because i was also a spring admit to my university so my semester actually started in january okay so i have to take like the first part of my year at a community college. Mm -hmm. And then I realized like I could compare both of the curriculums and I was like, the, they were essentially the same. Like yeah. the amount of work I had to put in and the professors are also very great at mm -hmm. both of them. So it's not like anything crazy. Yeah, but, dude, especially you know. nowadays, dude, I feel for high school students right now. Cause when I had to uh, apply to college in my senior year of high school, it was way easier than how it is now. Yeah. It's tough for high school students, dude. Yeah. I mean, like, nowadays, I admire anyone who is able to start university right after high school because you have to put in work in high school, man. I was a slacker in high school, and I was able <laughs> to get in somewhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and now it's even crazier because... They like a bunch of universities are saying like no MCAT, I mean, not MCAT, sorry, ACT or SAT. We're not like yeah, sorry. it's like a gray area now a little bit too. Yeah, yeah no, that's weird. Yeah. Um, okay, and then I have another question about um, like studying for the MCAT specifically. Mm -hmm. um, just like how much time would you say that you should put away for studying, um, or like are you supposed to be doing it throughout the years and then like allocate a time where you're just like putting in effort specifically for the test or just like a general idea of when you should study. Like I, a lot of my counselors are saying you should take it your junior year if you want to apply in the four years. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I just, I just wanted to know like how you would go about it or like your experience with it. Um, yeah. So for me personally, well, like you could do it either way. Like you could study alongside your classes and there's certain software like flashcards, like the Anki program. I don't know if you've heard of that, but you yeah. can do Anki alongside your classes. That's a beautiful way to study for it while you're doing your classes. If I were to study for the MCAT again and start over my pre-med journey again, that's exactly what I would do. Um, but a lot of people just take, just do, do their classes and try to do well and then worry about the MCAT when it's time to worry about the MCAT. And that's what I did, you know. But I think if people want to study alongside their classes, that's definitely doable.
Okay. Yeah. So do you think like three months or something around that time is a good time to put in like a lot of effort to... Yeah, so it depends, right? Like if it's three months where you have nothing else going on, that's great, right? But for people yeah. who are working part-time or who are balancing school and MCAT, both of which I don't recommend, but there are certain scenarios, you know, financially and academically where people have to balance MCAT with like other things, which is totally fine. But like yeah. you may have to take longer, you know what I mean? But I recommend to most people like maximize your chances by making your MCAT study period as chill as possible in regards to other obligations. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Because I think like if I want to take it during my school year, mm -hmm. like it'd be a good idea to kind of just. But this is also going back to the whole physics thing. Like I'm taking it because I don't want to be taking like hard science classes during that time I'm trying to study. So, yeah, that was, that was essentially what I wanted to know. Um. Okay. Oh, can I move on to like? You can ask whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember you, I think you posted something on your Instagram about like GPA and I think that helped me a lot. And, he said, and I wanted to thank you for that because like I keep going to all these like medical school like discussions or like tips and tricks mm -hmm. Zoom calls and they're like, no, you have to have like higher than this. You have to get higher than this. And I found myself like stressing over that one number. Yeah. And it, it kind of made studying harder for me because I was just like not enjoying any of my classes at that point. And yeah. like not even doing as well because of I was so stressed about everything. Yeah, no, I mean th that. I mean that. That's what happens when like. Well, like first of all, you have to get higher. Like that's absolutely not true. Like we all know there's a range of GPs and MCATs that get accepted, right? So anytime someone uses like the word "have to" or "should," automatically that raises like a, a red flag in my head, right? Like obviously, like you want to try your best, but like, dude, there's some things. Like you, you may have decided you want to go to go to med school like in the middle of your junior year and by that point your GPA is like, you know, depending on what your situation is like, it's almost fixed, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Okay, oh, also <laughs> for taking notes in classes, I found myself like, like for example, for bio class, I was taking so long to study for something and I'm like taking notes and then taking notes on my notes. Mm -hmm. And I thought that I was like helping my strategy strategy of studying for something. But I saw myself like putting like a long period of time to study for something and not getting the outcome I wanted. Mm -hmm. So I don't know like what st study strategies have helped you that you would recommend. Yeah, for me personally, like one, like I hate, no I hate reading and I hate note taking, yeah. you know? <laughs> So for yeah. me, it was all about like doing practice, practice problems, you know, um, especially if it's like a chem class or a math class or a physics class, you have to do practice mm -hmm. problems. For stuff like yeah. bio, um, just like looking through the slides and testing yourself, that worked for, for me if your class provides some practice questions, you know, practice mentor and practice exam. I'm all about like practice because honestly, I get bored reading, I get bored note taking, yeah. you know, so like... Um, I mean, even in med school, I didn't do much reading or much note taking because, oh, like, I just know it doesn't work for me, you know. But everyone's different. Do you use like Anki cards? Yes. Or, yes. Okay. Live and die by Anki. Uh, what? I live and die by Anki. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe that's something I should look into. Yes. With for bio too, because yeah, like can all those classes like you have to practice for it, but bio is just like recalling everything and. Like how many ever notes I take, I'm like, oh my god, I still can't. So, yeah. That's so funny. One of the comments in the stream is Anki Clutch AF. Jose, <laughs> I agree with you 100. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah. Okay, I think that's it so far. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, thank you. Of course. Like you know. I actually was recommended to you by Sahar. I don't know if you know her. I, I'm pretty sure you do know her. She went to UCI. She's at UC Riverside Medical School right now. W was she in a sorority? She was. Yeah, I, I remember yeah. like interacting with her a little bit. Yeah, that's so funny. Yeah, she's family friends, and she was like, oh, this guy does like mentorship. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that's awesome. I, I'm happy to hear that she's in med school now. That's so dope. Yeah, yeah, she was. Yeah, no, you should tell her I said hi. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you so Sounds much. Sounds good. For Stay in touch, okay? Okay, thank you. All right. Okay, bye. Bye. All right, so because I have a Zoom basic account, I need to make a new meeting, but let me tell Santiago that.
because there's a 40 minute limit. Yo, Santiago, what's up? Bro, I'm going to invite you to another meeting because the, the time limit on this one is running out. So I'll shoot you a, like another link on on Instagram, okay? All right, yeah, sounds good. All right, bye. All right, let's make a new meeting. New meeting. I wonder if it's automatically going to stream the new meeting. Is it? It is. Awesome. Okay, let's invite him. Wow, what an easy workaround to like getting past the meeting limit. All right, Santiago will be joining us right now. While we're waiting, let's go through the stream. You do Zoom meetings. Yes, this is the first one, but I will do more because I love live stuff. Let's look at the YouTube stream. What are the comments like? Anki Clutch AF, Crystal Ing, will this live stream be saved and uploaded for anyone to watch on your channel later? Yes. Do you think it's a good idea to study from an MCAT review book with the respective classes you are taking? Is it a good idea to get started early? Yes, but that's not how I would get started early. Um, review books are good for summarizing the content, but like, you know, I don't think it's the end all be all. So like, you know, um, yeah, if it were me, I would just study for your classes and then do a pre-made Anki card deck that's relevant to the classes that you're in, right? And in Anki, you can search through the cards and find the relevant cards. So yeah, that's how I would do it, Albert. All right, let's see. All right, Santiago's in. Let's do it. Yo. What's uh, up, dude? What up? How's uh, it going, man? So I just want to start off by saying thank you for all the information and everything. Dude, it's of course. It's helped me a lot, and I am pretty sure it's helped everyone else that watches your channel or watches your TikToks, you know? Yeah, thanks, man. That means a lot, bro. Yeah, of course. Uh... But, so I have a, a couple of questions. Uh, so right now, I go to a small school, right, in Iowa. So okay. Basically, university is a pretty small school. But, uh, right, so first, like, would that, if I end up graduating from there, would that have any, like, negative impact in my application, like, going into medical school? Or? Yeah, so, I mean, like, you know, I think... Even if it did have a negative impact, which I don't think it does, um, you know, like you've already made the decision to attend the school you're at. You know what I mean? So like I wouldn't get caught up in like a detail like that because like you're already there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like, you know, like maybe people who come from like super crazy schools like Harvard, Yale, Princeton, MIT, Stanford, stuff like that. Like I think that can confer somewhat of an advantage, but like. Like, I went to a state school, you know, and it ended up working out for me. Yeah. Like, bro, I know plenty of people in my med school class now who went to small schools like yours. So I wouldn't yeah. Yeah. trip up a, about that. So, so oh, that's the, well, the other question would be like, right now I play soccer, right, for mm -hmm. school. So, like, when it comes to time managing and stuff like that, like, what do you recommend? Or Because I know you're in a frat, and that's what I would, like, kind of compare it to, you know? Like, you, you have to do frat stuff so let's say i have to do like sports you know yeah they both take time and and stuff for like when it comes to getting hours for pre-med mm -hmm. like for medical school and stuff mm -hmm. so uh, what do you what, what would you say like about that like how were you able to get everything done although you have to do like other stuff you know yeah so like is this like a club soccer team or like the schools like no, no, division like like, yeah, yeah, like, nice yeah. nice dude well i think that's awesome like you know first of all i had a few brothers in my fraternity who were on like sports teams and now they're in like law school grad school med school and stuff like that actually i know someone who was in my fraternity and on my school soccer team who's now at uci med school so uh you know after this like why don't you shoot me a dm and i'll see if i can get you in touch with like one of those guys who can kind of like give you sports specific advice because i feel like you know they would understand like the the situation of like a school athlete and like trying to get into grad school so make sure to message me after this and i'll try to plug you in with like one of those people but um dude i mean it's just balance bro like you know like 
in season, like you have to give it your all with like soccer and stuff. You know what I mean? And I think, you know, you're going to feel better when you realize like, you know, yo, this is my scenario. You know, I'm on the soccer team. Like I'm assuming you like soccer, right? Or like you enjoy it. Yeah. So like, you know, I mean, you can't compare yourself to someone who's like doing other things with their time. You know, maybe you'll have to like, maybe you'll have a slightly busier schedule. Maybe you may have to take an extra year. Maybe you may have to take an extra two years, but like, you know, that's your journey, you know, and I'm sure playing soccer is worth it. You know what I mean? And then also like right now I'm a nursing major, right? Mm -hmm. But I've always wanted to, like, my goal is to become a, not not really like a doctor, but more like a PA, physician assistant. Okay. So, and I know it's kind of like the same get into PA school, med school is, is you gotta get hours, you gotta get stuff done, like pretty much the same path, you know? But um, I've always been like scared to like, not like pursue it, but kind of like, yeah, kind of pursue it. Cause so I'm like, I'm gonna settle with uh, nursing. Cause I don't know if I can, if I can like take on being a PA and getting into PA school, you know? So like, I know that I'm probably smart for it. Cause right now, like, uh, I'm going into my sophomore year and I have like a 3.8 GPA, right? And and, and it's, it's good, but I feel like if I were to like switch majors from nursing to like biochem or just bio, I feel like uh, like I won't be able to do it due to the sports and everything else that I have going on. Well, bro, I want to say, for, like, first of all, you have a 3.8 GPA at the end of your sophomore year and you're a soccer athlete. You've already shown to yourself that you're capable of balancing things just fine. So you're doing a really fucking good job right now. And I want you to know that, um, mm-hmm. you know, I think, you know, so normally if you were applying to med school, I, I would say something different, but PA school is unique because like they actually want you to have certain hours. You know what I mean? Like you, there's like an hour minimum of clinical experience that you need to apply. So like, um, you know, I think be, staying a nursing major, if PA is your goal, actually may help you because you could work as a nurse for like a year and then you get those hours. You know yes, what I mean? And then go to PA school. Oh, okay. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what my advisor kind of told me. Like, we have an advisor for like your major, like a mm-hmm. counselor, and she said that, yeah, that, that's the way you can do it, you know? Yeah, bro. And then I also, guess. like, in nursing, there's, like, so many different, like, advanced practice uh, registered nurses. Like, you could be an NP, you could be a CRNA, like, you could be a midwife, like, you could be, like, so many different things. And, you know, so you may end up finding something in nursing that is right up your alley, and you may end up just staying in nursing. For you know sure, what I mean? Yeah. So I think if I were you right now, bro, I would just explore a bunch of different things in your free time. Con- like, hit up people on LinkedIn, hit up nurses hit up all these different types of nurses, NPs, CRNAs, get their like perspective on how they like their job, hit up the PAs in all these different fields and just ask them what they like and what they don't like and then tell them like, yo, like these are my interests, like what would you tell me if I was trying to decide and you know, get their perspective, yeah. you know? Because that's the, the golden nugget of wisdom right there is gonna be people who are already doing it and seeing how they like it and then comparing their perspective and their values to to yours and helping you make a more informed decision. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Uh, Thank you. Thank you for all that. Uh, I I think that's pretty much it. Those those are my questions. For sure, bro. Uh, But but yeah, that I'll for sure try to more into it and I'll probably end up sticking with nursing and seeing yeah, no, I mean, like, like, you know, like, if you're thinking either nursing or PA, I would just stay be, because, like, you can, like, most, I know some nursing students, like, when I was at, at UCI who worked as CNAs while they were in their undergraduate, and, like, you could work as a CNA as a nursing student and start get, get, uh, getting those hours towards PA school, right? Like, during this time where you're kind of educating yourself on what field you want to do, I would just try to make moves towards both fields, Right, which b- being a nursing major will let you be, be because you're getting those hours and stuff. Oh, yes, sure. So yes. yeah, and dude, right. in terms of like balance and stuff, I feel like you already know how to balance. If you have a three eight and you've already been a soccer player for two years, like you know what you're doing, bro. Yeah, I, I mean, like I'm still trying to figure it out, honestly, because it's it's just a lot. Sometimes we have like uh, we have to train in the morning and then afternoon, so there's barely any time to study and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know? But I mean. We'll see. Hopefully I can keep it up and then 
I think you will. I have this weird feeling that it's going to work out for you. I'm yeah. serious. All right, I'll, I'll keep in touch. And then we'll yeah, see. man. Bro, you, you got to keep me updated, okay? For sure. Thank you so much. All right, bro. I'll see you around. All right. Thanks, man. Later. That was, that was cool. He's a nice guy. Let's look at the comments while I invite the next person. Yo, TikTok and YouTube, let me know your thoughts on the stream so far. I want to hear about it. Who are we going to invite next? My mind is like all over the place. I'm having so much fun. Okay. Let's see. I feel bad because like I told everyone seven. I didn't realize like, you know, we were going to get so in depth, but this is awesome. Uh, let's see. Who's next? Who else did I say yes to? Tatiana, Daphne. Uh... Oh, cool. This may be the last person. All right, while we're waiting, let's go through the stream. Let's see what's up. How's the quality? I've never live streamed like this before, so you guys got to let me know how the quality is. Let's see. Oh, wait, someone asked a question. When you applied to medical school, was the scholarship something separate you applied for, or was it something they surprised you with? I was surprised. Feel free to not answer this question because I respect privacy. No, I'm, I try to be transparent with you guys, honestly. Like, you know, um, for this scholarship and for a lot of medical school scholarships, they just use the same information that's in your med school application. So, uh, yeah, that's how it worked out. Uh, and then when they accepted me, they let me know that I got the scholarship. You're coming in clutch to this live stream. Oh, thank you. The, the live is laggy. I think it's better now. Coming in clutch with that connection. Yes, preach. Go, go nurses. Hey, a buddy of mine switched from nursing to PA. Much respect, man. You got it. He can be a nurse practitioner if he likes nursing. Yes, PA school does want more hours. NP route is great. They have required patient contact hours. Information interviews. I think clinicals from nursing would count. I think it would count too. But I would get in touch with someone at like a, a PA school to see what they say. You know what I mean? Big money moves in both fields. Definitely want to be in the Q&A next time. I love this. Yo, hit me up and we'll make it happen. Same man, this is dope. My screen freezes from time to time. All right. Let me know if it continues being laggy. All right, next person. Let's do it. Where is the next person? Submit. Come on, come on, come on, come on. My nose is so shiny and oily. Hello. 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 Do you want to introduce yourself for the listeners? Hi, so my name is Brianna. Um, I'm currently a freshman. Uh, I go to community college and like my goals are to, you know, transfer to a four year and then I um, want to pursue med school to become a physician. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Uh, what can we help you with? Saying, oh. Like, thank you so much <laughs> for all the advice that you've given me on Instagram. Like, it's been so helpful. Oh, uh, like, um, you're very welcome. Nobody has helped me that much before. It's been really helpful. Thank you. You're very welcome. You know, I'm happy to help. I'm just trying to pay it back, you know. Thank you. Thank you. So what's up? What can we help you with okay. tonight? So I had some questions. I just, so, like, I'm a freshman. So I'm barely starting. I'm like first generation, you know, first to go to college in my family. Um, I just try to get as much help as possible. I do want to go to med school. That's like been my dream, like since like second grade, like always like been thinking, wow, like I want to help people. Um, so yeah, that's always been a dream of mine. So like right now I'm, you know, barely getting into the prerequisites, uh, you know, just like of the med school. My major is biology. Um, but yeah, I just wanted, you know, if you can help me out with like some advice, I struggle a lot with like math based subjects. And I know for like the biology major, I have to take like chem and physics, mm -hmm. um, and like our math, I have to get up to like calculus. So, you know, I just wanted to, you know, just get some advice on that, how to like go through with my journey, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, I think the first step is not dwelling or like focusing your mind on the idea of like, oh, like I'm not good at math things or like, oh, this class is gonna be so hard because there's math involved, you know? Like first and foremost, like, you know, math is just like any other skill. Like you could learn it, you know what I mean? Like, for example, like me starting off in my college, I struggle with chemistry a lot 
And you know, I felt like I was at a significant disadvantage because you know, everyone else I was taking these classes with had taken AP chemistry and I literally just took basic level chemistry in high school. I had like no idea. I thought I was like, and I truly felt like I was like never going to figure it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I kind of had to show myself by just putting myself out there to just study a little bit every day, do the practice questions, and just train myself to kind of think in the way that the class wanted me to think, you know? And it became easier once I stopped dwelling on the idea of like, well, you never took AP chemistry, so you're not gonna be as good as these people. Like, who cares? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, you know, our mind just can affect us so much, you know? So I think if you won, stop dwelling on like, or just stop thinking about, oh, I'm not good at math, I'm not good at math-related stuff, my math background is weak, like, forget all that, throw it out the window, because like, you know, it's a skill just like anything else, you know what I mean? Um, so that's what I would do first. And then at that point, it's doing what you're already doing, like asking for help, you know? Um, I mean, like being comfortable, like reaching out to a professor or a TA and being like, yo, like even before the class starts, like you can just be like, hey, like is there anything that you recommend I review before the classes start in the fall? Or like, you know, is there like any sort of practice or resources you can send me to uh, to help me get prepared for this course? There's so many online resources out there, like, you know, um, there's just a lot out there that can help you learn. And, you know, it's all, it, it's up to us to ask for the help and to seek out the help yes, both in person exactly. and online and also just kind of sample and see what works for us and then just p put in the effort at the end of the day, you, you know, but it all starts with not dwelling. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that. Um, I guess like my other question would be just like the road to med school. So like I'm at a community college right now and I'm mm -hmm. having like, you know, difficulty. So my plan right now is three year, three year at community college and then transferring to a four year. Okay. So I guess I would do about like two or three more years at a, at a, when I transferred to university. Mm -hmm. So wh um, what is that like? Like, would I have to be taking more chem and more bio in the four year universities in order to graduate or to then go to med school? So the way it works, it all depends on your major, right? So the med school prerequisites, typically it's like a year of bio with labs, a year of general chemistry with labs, a year of organic chemistry with labs, a year of physics with labs, and then a certain amount of like English and math classes. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're a bio major, you're going to meet those requirements naturally, cool, cool. you know? So, um, you know, when you get plugged into your the university that you end up transferring to, I would just go to the academic counseling office and let them know what your goals are just to see if there's any sort of way to like optimize your schedule. But if you're a bio major, like the classes you take at your university are, are mostly gonna be bio classes, just like, like upper division bio classes that are kind of more specific. Does that make oh, sense? Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, that makes sense, that makes sense. All right. Well, yeah, I just kind of wanted, you know, to get some, like, advice, like, some, like, real just raw advice on, like, how, like, things are supposed to, I know, like, there's going to be bumps in, in my journey and everything, mm -hmm. and I know that, like, I'm kind of, like, going through one right now with, like, the, the math and chemistry, like, trying my best and um, getting through it, so, I, like, at the moment, I have a B, which I think, you know, it's good enough for how hard I'm trying. So I, I'm just going to, you know, continue trying. I'm not going to give up. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just wanted some advice on that, you know. So thank you for that. Yeah, of course. Uh, what else is on your mind? Uh, I guess just, you know, I have, I always have like doubts because I'm always like, it's so long. Like every, like the whole med journey is like so long. Like I always hear like my counselors saying it's 11 years, you know, you can go up to like 12 years and they're like, you know, there's like different shorter things to go. Um, like there's like nursing, which is shorter, but like, I really want to stick to the med school. Like that's, that's my, that's my passion. That's mm -hmm. what I really want to do. Mm -hmm. So I just want to like, you know, hear some advice from you about like the, like how long it is or like if there's been any struggles with like the, the time frame. Yeah. Well, like, you know, I think, you know, worrying about time doesn't really matter if you know, this is what you want to do. And you've kind of already like understood that for yourself at this point, it seems like, yeah. you know, uh, there was someone earlier who, who actually the first person on the live who had asked, oh, like, you know, like, what's it like seeing your friends, like, go on and have jobs while you're still in school studying and, like, blessing yeah. your butt? And I'm just like, you know, I don't really, I never, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I haven't even thought about that once. Because I just feel like I'm living my best life because I'm where I want to be. I'm on the path that I want to be on. I still get to do the things I want to do outside of school. And, you know, like, 
yeah, like it's a long road until like, you know, you can like start your life, like whatever the hell that means, you know, but like, you know, I don't know, it's been fun. You know, if this is something that you genuinely want to do, and again, the only way that you can have a good hunch of that is by shadowing and volunteering and, and talking to doctors and seeing if that sounds like something that you would want to do, you, you know, then like you wouldn't, like, I think the people who end up worrying about the time frame are the ones who are unsure if this is something that they really want to do. And that doesn't yeah. sound like you, like you sound like you're very set. You know, and so don't let those words or thoughts from other people like get to you because yeah. you're 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 living your life right now. Like, of course, you're in school and you're making moves toward getting into med school. But like, you know, things in general are going to work out fine as long as we educate ourselves on the process and put in an honest amount of effort. Yeah, exactly. That, that's exactly how I think as well. I'm just like, you know, I'm living I'm, I'm pursuing what I want to do. Like, yeah, I see like my friends not having so much homework and like having so much free time and I'm just like, wow. But I'm just like, you know, you know what? This is all going to pay off at the end. So I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing, you know? Yeah, I mean like, dude, I don't know. Like, we, we're going to get sad eventually. Like when we compare ourselves to others, there's always going to be someone who's doing one thing better than us. And you know, even if we compare ourselves and other people are doing worse off, like that shouldn't really make us feel good. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't know. Just yeah. like you, you seem to be in a really good place, like me like mentally, which is awesome. Yes. You know, it's just a matter of like applying that towards this whole math thing, and just just yeah. I feel like once you prove to yourself just once, like you get that first exam score, like where you actually put in a good amount of effort and you studied and you got a good score, like. Like once you see that and you figure out a, like a strategy that seems like to work, it's all going to be downhill from there. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Okay. Thank you. I guess my, my last question would kind of be, since like I'm a freshman um, mm -hmm. in college, it was like my first year uh, in okay. high school, senior, I used to like volunteer at like um, a hospital, but like what other vol or like volunteer things would you recommend for me as a freshman, like barely starting to actually you know, get a, get a view of what's actually happening in, in like the hospital, the medical field. Yeah. So, you, you know, this opens up the whole idea of doing like extracurriculars. Um, you know, first and foremost, like we want to make sure that we have a good footing academically. Right. So like, mm -hmm. I think it's important to just slowly dip our toe into extracurricular activities while still maintaining a good standing academically. Right. Um, so while yeah. like I, I wouldn't get worried about diving headfirst into a whole bunch of, uh, of like different things until we feel like we we're in like a good place with our classes and like volunteering is a great place to start. Right. Um, you want, so basically for extracurriculars, there's a few different check boxes that I think of. The first one, as you mentioned, is volunteering and you can do volunteering in a clinical setting and a non clinical setting. So clinical volunteering would be like volunteering in a hospital, volunteering in some sort of clinic or just any sort of environment like where there's patients. Uh, you know, that, that could, that's like one example of volunteering. You can also do non-clinical volunteering, like, you know, um, you know, making masks for healthcare workers or like, you know, working at a homeless shelter, serving food, you know, stuff like that, that that's just like things that like come into my head in this moment. So that would be non-clinical yeah. volunteering. Um, after that, you, you want to get some shadowing, right? So shadowing is okay. when you shadow a physician and that's when you're just watching the physician as they go and see patients. And shadowing is really good because it kind of exposes you like firsthand to what being a doctor is like. Like you can do clinical volunteering and interact with patients and stuff, but you may never like really see what a doctor is actually doing for the patient. Whereas in shadowing, like you're literally following the doctor around, seeing what they're doing, you know? And for uh, shadowing, that just comes from hitting up a, bu a bunch of doctors and asking if you can shadow them, you know, long story short. After that, I think about research. So uh, that's like, you know, working in some sort of research lab. And um, unfortunately, in community college, there are less opportunities to do research at that school. But even though you're a community college student, that doesn't mean that you can't do research at a local university nearby. You don't have to be a student at a university to do research at the university. You, you know okay, what I mean? Cool. So you can get involved in that now. Just find a local university that has like research opportunities and just yeah. same thing with the, the shadowing, hit up a bunch of doctors and I mean, hit up a bunch of the research professors and see if they have room for you to join their lab. 
Uh, and then after that, it's just general like leadership experience, like being involved in, in clubs on campus, and they don't have to be medical or pre-med related. Doing things that you're passionate about, joining clubs about things that are passionate about that you're passionate about, joining some sort of like I don't know fraternity, sorority, cultural organizations. Um, like for me, I had a radio show on my school's radio station, and that was like a huge thing for me. And that was one of my main extracurriculars, you know. So after that, it's just like doing things that you're passionate about. You know, so those are just yeah, examples of cool. things that you should or that you could start getting into. But there's no rush, especially like, you know, it, it sounds like you're very comfortable with the whole timing thing. So again, like don't force yourself to get rushed into this process. Just dip your toes in things one at a time and see what you enjoy and, and like go from there. Yeah, exactly. Because like I feel like right now since like my freshman year, I'm getting used to like the classes, the science-based classes and everything. And then um, hopefully after that, like, you know, starting to get into extracurriculars and everything like that. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. Thank you for the advice. Yeah, it's no problem at and all. I mean, like, you know, I didn't join, like, I didn't do anything significant extracurricularly until, like, the end of my sophomore year, you know? So, like, a lot of people feel behind, you know, at mm -hmm. this point. But, like, dude, like, everyone has their own timeline. It's, you know, again, as I mentioned earlier, as long as we put in a decent amount of effort, then, exactly. and then, like, just, like, you know, educate ourselves on this process, you know, things are going to work out, so... Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. So that was it. That was like just asking for advice. And cool. Thank yeah. You for your response. Yeah. No, it's no, it's, it's no problem at all. I want you to keep me updated. Okay. Okay. For sure. I'll shoot you DMs. Sounds Thank good. Thank you. I'll see you later. Thank you. Uh huh. Damn. So that's it. That was the last one that I had lined up for tonight. Let's look at the stream. Let's see what people are thinking. How was the quality? I want to know the quality. I want to know about the quality. Who's who's uh, tuned in on YouTube and can tell me how the quality is going? Let me know. Let's see. Let's see. You guys are chatty in this stream. That's dope. Yeah. Let's see. Definitely want to make Q and A. Yes. Just slide in my DMs. I mean, I had I had a lot of fun with this. I wish I could do this every night. Maybe I will. I don't know. This was a lot of fun. Screen freezes. Anyone stream from the East Coast right here, Josh? Midwest. Nothing. There are some online resources, math stuff. I feel you, man. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. You guys are providing some awesome advice in the stream, too. Asking for help is probably the best thing to learn, TBH. I wish I did that as a freshman at LMAO. We try to stay on top of how the credits transfer. I'm an incoming freshman for college. Any advice about how I should study for MCAT since I'm planning to study while I'm in school? Yeah, check out my MCAT study guide. The link is in my Instagram bio um, or like the website bio of my TikTok if you're on TikTok. And um, yeah, look on Reddit, reddit.com slash r slash Anki MCAT. Oh, oops, I, I spelled that totally wrong. I suck. Anki MCAT. So educate yourself on how Anki works and how people use it for the MCAT and do Anki cards relevant to your current uh, classes as you go through your classes. Any advice for asking for help slash getting in contact with professors with everything online? I don't want to annoy the professors since time's already tough. Don't worry about being annoying. If you're one of their students, you're not being annoying. Like if, you, if you're a student at the university, like you're a student, this is your education. Take charge of your education and be precise about what you're looking for help in. Yes, that's a really good point too. It reminds me of the motivational talks that I, I, I listen to daily. Oh, thank you, that's very kind. Solid quality, good quality, looks better, pretty good. When you switch to a different position, it lags. I move around a lot. Good quality Oreo daddy. Reddit is gold, so worth it. Yes. Well, this was a lot of fun. Thank you guys for tuning in on YouTube and TikTok. This was super fun. Um, let me know what you guys thought. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Let me know what topic you guys want to hear about next. Um, and let me know what other platforms you guys would like to see this stream on, you know? Um, I'm thinking Facebook, Twitch, uh, Instagram maybe. I did TikTok today, but maybe I'll use my phone for Instagram next time. But this was a lot of fun. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. You guys are awesome. You too, seriously. I'll see you guys later. Stay in touch, okay? Let's see. How do I end this?